Okay. So, uh, welcome to uh, doing the CE GUI or Crazy Edit GUI, graphical user interface. Uh, my name is Nate Nessler and this is for Hyperactive Studios. Now, basically what we're looking at is XML version of this document here. And we can use a Crazy Edit uh, layout editor here for creating. And this is probably really honestly the best way to do this. Um, for a number of reasons, I prefer using the Crazy Eddy GUI system for doing this. And we'll also look at other methods in which you could use to create this. You could actually program it all from scratch uh, inside of C++ with Crazy Eddy's GUI API. However, um, you're best off if you do it honestly in XML because several things. You can graphically lay things out and get it look just the way you want it. Um, a artist as a uh, web designer can literally lay out the web design and they're very familiar with XML they are not going to be familiar with Crazy Eddie's GUI system API and so it just makes sense to have it done up in XML where an artist can easily manipulate it and do it and change it and make it look amazing so uh, of course you're going to want to uh, do your layout in this manner okay so all I've done is same as previous video where I went in and I um, added in the elements in the GUI here and it said you know add window etc 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 and do these different ones and I put them underneath their um, titles here as you can see so they went under chat window because it's part of chat window and same thing here for the name chat window chat client eb for edit box um, chat window slash chat send button you know so here's the send button here's the edit box here so on and so forth and chat window slash chat server message list and the server message list is right here so you know it was nothing more than I come in here and said add and gone down to here and then found the uh, you know list list box here so well, yeah. So, anyways, and that's all there is to that. So, let's look at how this translates into XML code, and see how we can go about doing this. And uh, this makes it easy for if someone wants to extend uh, some other part of the application interface, you can just literally read it in and process it uh, based off the XML. It makes life easy for a number of reasons. Let's have a look at what the XML looks like now. Okay, so I have it pulled up. Exact same thing we were just looking at, but this is translated in as an XML document that then gets read into our program. Um, and as and just in a quick example, showing this. All right, so we can see the application is indeed here, and it currently works fine. Uh, all right, and this is going to work with our client, with our server here, and we'll just get into this here as we go along. But yeah, as you can see, working just fine. Servers say just working fine, and yeah, you know, I can even prove that yes, indeed, the server is working. But this is the same server you coded earlier, so this really shouldn't be a surprise to you uh, with it working. Let's see here, which one is it? It's this one right here. So you can see here, uh, working just fine. So and there you go, yeah, working just fine right here. So it came from the client, and then the server replied back to the same client. Uh, we could have multiple clients and have it send out to each one, but yeah, there you are. So very cool, and it works great. And I even set up my cursor like this to be um, Crazy Eddie GUI's cursor. All right, but there we are, and the window is meant to be transparent like that. So that's not a mistake, actually. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, could have done one where it's not semi-transparent on the window and it wouldn't have been transparent like that it would have been uh, a solid color it just looks more solid in the editor because there's nothing behind it so it just comes out this is dark green um, I think it's probably why this Taharaza or however you say it is popular it just doesn't have transparencies in it transparencies look cool if you did everything crazy at a GUI system but I think against the SDL window it's not as um, pretty in my opinion but that's my own opinion but the, the ogre windows are really cool regardless okay so anyways open um, here greater than less than signs and closing them and question marks on each side and we're doing XML space version 
here equals in quotes 1.0 close quotes space encoding equals in quotes UTF all caps dash a close quotes here alright so that's just to let it know that it's XML and you might be going well it's not really highlighting even though it's XML well part of the reason why it's not highlighting as XML is it has a dot layout extension and it's determining its highlighting uh, setup here for color coding inside of um, code blocks based off the extension. Now we can have a dot layout instead of a dot XML if we like or a dot you know something whatever name we have dot scheme for instance etc. So this way you can organize what kind of files are based on the types of extensions and it has no problem whatsoever doing that. So it still come up as an XML document. However I can go into edit mode and go over to highlight and I could come down to XML and it will highlight up accordingly and there we go so now it's all lit up the way we would like it to be and it's going to be easy to read now whereas before it wouldn't have been so that certainly is a plus alright I'm slid that over so you can see it easily okay going on further here we're going to open and closing uh, tag here for our greater than lesson signs of GUI layout here so it should be written up just like this okay and then an opening one here so we're defining our layout and we have a closing tag of GUI layout and it's just like regular HTML where we have the slash at the end so this basically denotes we're going to start something think of this like an if then statement or any of those type of um, functions or something like that we have open and close curly braces in C++ this is basically like a begin and end set up here for a block of code so essentially we're going to find the GUI layout between those two tags here and then we're going to go to a window and this is going to be our main window or shall I say root window for our um, document here and it's going to be contained within these two tags now everything else inside of these window tags is a child of this window so be aware of that and because that does matter and you can see everything else is at the same hierarchical, hierarchical level as um, you know each other aside from being indented with inside the main window so yes they're all childs of the main window at the same level of um, well hierarchy which is the way you want it and that's important so window here space type here is bracket equals in quotes ogre tray slash frame window close quotes space name equals quotes chat window close quotes close uh, less than sign here you might be going well where earth does this come from well let's have a look at that actually if I went to my CE GUI here and this was inside of the uh, I just copied this directly into my folder from um, slash uh, USR slash local slash uh, share slash CE GUI and this is where it was so and this has the layouts and all that stuff and if we look at the ogre scheme and its look and feel and its image set um, we'll see a few things here that kinda makes things jump out and that is the fact that all these need to be converted first first of all XML. How this thing is set up and defined is what's going to jump out at you. Where is it coming from, more or less? Um, and with that, uh, it really helps a lot in understanding what's going on. Here, if the scheme you can actually see how, how things are laid out. So here we have an ogre button which gets mapped to CE GUI as a push button, right? And then this gets mapped as a uh, Falagrard, uh, probably murdering that, uh, button, which is an ogre tray push button for its look and feel. All right. So this is the lookup and the correlation between the different parts for the mapping of the different parts of the file. You can see this for every single one of them. 
So you have a really good idea of what is what and where goes where uh, one thing goes to another thing, and what the proper name is for it and everything. And so that's how we come up with the proper names for this stuff over here. So it's not like out thin air that ogre tray frame window came about. Um, so you know for the type. You notice here, ochre tray frame window. Like I said, it's not out of blue. It actually uh, is defined in a certain way for a certain reason. And there you are. Name here, so that's the type. So what are we actually setting up? And then we're giving it a name. We're naming it chat window. So our root window here is chat window for this particular display. And then the property here, name equals text. So we're defining what its name is, is text, and it's going to give it a value of chat. So our window is going to have what? It's going to be the main window, and it's going to say chat right here. All right? Okay. So for text, it's going to have chat stored in it. And that's a special. Um, with this property here, you'll notice this is a property tag, and it's not part of the window tag. You might be saying, well, this has a type and a name up here. Well, that was part of the window um, tag, however, though. And the property tag has its own set here, uh, and you need to be aware of that. So property here, name equals text, and value is chat. It's going to be closed, curly brace. I mean, not curly, but closed, um, greater than, less than signs, with the slash, of course. For the tag, uh, this is strict, strict uh, like X HTML type standard here for the tags. So same is going to be used. All right, um, a few other things I could do here to show how the stuff lays out or works, etc. Is besides schemes, we can also look at um, the whole. Uh, well. Essentially, we can look at our uh, layouts here for our scheme or crazy GUI configuration or Felagrad or any of these two image sets, etc. And we can see how these lay out. And so you can see how things are named and mapped, etc. And I'm just going to keep hitting this thing with XML. So you can make out what stuff is. So here you can see how things match up accordingly between the different parts. And this is kind of how you hunt it down. There's also some documentation online for this too. But I found these files just to be terribly helpful for just actually going and looking at the actual structure and seeing what there was and, and in this way you can really figure out a lot of stuff without even being told what goes with what and also it's great you can cheat with the uh, if you don't know what something is you can go ahead and hit it up inside the GUI uh, here and have it generate it for you and you can go back and review it and that also helps but I did hand in, edit this file out. initially I didn't have um, I had an extra window in there I couldn't use and it did cause a problem. Uh, so I had to go in and remove those extra windows, actually windows, yeah. And I've narrowed it down just to um, this code here and that's what worked out well for me. So I actually did hand code this file. <laughs> um, it's not totally the graphical actually. Um, and in the case of parts of this file, I literally hand wrote it all together by myself completely and uh, particularly this box here uh, because I didn't use the uh, GUI for generating that instead I, I hand wrote it in but I did use a GUI to help me solve and find out what something is called or listed in here and I found that to make a big difference and certainly gave me great results so you know feel free to use the GUI um, to help generate this uh, setup but there's problems also be prepared to jump into this file and edit it yourself um, because it really does for able to troubleshoot and, and um, make things work the way you want it to it is really important that you can go in here and edit this file and actually know what all the stuff is and know what it all means 
it will save you a ton of time and headaches if you understand it. So it is re really rather important. Um, there's also possibly in here. Uh, we'll see here. We'll have a look. <laughs> Assuming I remember where stuff is. Now, Crazy Edit GUI's thing has tons of great tutorials in here and additional reference material. So here you go. You can get additional reference material on image sets, font schemes, layout, CE GUI configuration files, etc. Filegrad system for CE GUI. Um, is also in here, which is great. Uh, Crazy Edit GUI's namespaces, which is extremely useful too, by the way, is also listed in here. And you just hit these, uh, well, it's right here at this address. So if you just copy down this address, you can go to that and check it out. Don't forget also, you have this kind of stuff on your hard drive too, uh, as you if you downloaded the documentation. And then he's also got a great tutorial. It's been updated on dot layouts here. That's really nice and useful. Uh, but once I go over some of this stuff, it'll make a whole lot more sense because this separate by itself isn't going to make a whole lot of sense in and of itself. But um, you will find it make more sense as we go through this. All right. Uh, but this is cool, and I did have to do some code a little different than what he has in here in order to make it work. But for the most part, it's the same thing. Uh, well, not the same thing as this code here, but it's the same idea, let's put it that way. Alright. No, my code is not the same as his code. Because I, I hand wrote mine, so there's no way it can be. But it doesn't matter. Um, Property here, space, name, equals, in quotes, caption, font, close quotes, space, value, equals, quotes, uh, deja view sans, dash 10, close quotes. Now this is basically what we're setting up is our fonts. In this case, a caption font, or shall we say the font for the window for displaying the text chat is being set here. Uh, you can do that uh, underneath the hood inside of the actual program, but there's really no need since we can actually set an exit. XHTML document. And the cool thing is you can actually change what font it is per file. And this helps really reduce the code in the actual implementation. Not to mention you can actually change things up here in XML as it gets read in and still have it work. So very, very cool and very powerful. And really opens up extra options that you wouldn't have normally and really makes life easier for extending it. So for instance, say you wanted to add something new or a new some some new functionality uh, to your application. You wouldn't necessarily have to go back in and recode the application. Literally an artist could go in, which is typically what's going to be working through programs, and if they already know HTML or XML or any of this stuff, they could easily go in and edit these uh, lines and stuff here. And this is something they could easily understand, whereas the actual C++ code is way over their head. But this is easy for them to understand, and it's stored in nice data and laid out uh, nice in a smart manner. And this is done quite commonly on games uh, to do it in XML um, and, and for the design of the interface. So essentially, the artist could extend the interface and add additional functionality without you having to touch a single line of code and without having to rewrite any portion of the actual program. You could literally just come here and edit some of these files and um, add additional parts to it, and bam it would be updated in the program. So there's a whole lot of benefits to handling things this way. And it's really powerful and it's really great. So I highly recommend this uh, method here over just hand coding it directly into C++. I really do feel like the XML is superior as a um, development model. And not to mention you can also use the GUI here for uh, creating your windows, which is also another strong uh, benefit because getting these values for these numbers for the span, size, location, etc. of the windows and their placement and all this stuff would be very difficult and time consuming to hand code. Um, you're way fa better off and way faster to uh, create these GUIs graphically where you can literally scale and place items uh, directly graphically, digitally. Uh, with basically this is acts as a RAD tool as it's called, Rapid Application Development as it's called in industry for programming uh, interfaces. And so this is standard in a lot of um, programming suites where they have a, a RAD tool for creating quickly a whole GUI layout so that way you're not spending ridiculous amounts of time guessing about what numbers will magically make things line up and all this stuff. Instead you can just kick it out really quickly and easily. So that's what 
really highly recommend the method I am uh, now showing you. Uh, I'll look at showing you the other method here shortly thereafter. Okay, for completeness. Um, who knows, you may need the other method from time to time too. So, hey, you know, not necessarily a bad thing. Alright, so property here, uh, space and then name equals uh, open quotes here, uh, title bar enabled, close quotes, uh, and then we have space value here equals in quotes, true, close quotes, slash uh, lesson, and greater than signs, we're closing it, um, for the tags and opening in the tags course. So yeah, for every one of these tags, it's going to be a greater than and less than signs at the end at each point and then there's also a slash at the end of every one of these so you can just get in the habit of just popping those in you know hey okay so this gives us what the title bar that is enabled so that hey we can have text at the top of the window so aka title bar is this right here so here's your title bar so that way you can say chat or whatever message you want maybe we'll call it chat window or chat messages or whatever it doesn't matter whatever you want to call it. As long as that makes sense. Straightforward. Because you want the user to kind of know what it is. Alright. So property here, space name equals in quotes, unified area ret close quotes, space value equals and uh, open quotes here, uh, open curly brace, open curly brace, 0, 0.0 blah 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 long number close. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, comma, 0, close curly brace, comma, and an open curly brace zero and some number here comma zero etc 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 so we're doing sets of numbers right and what are these numbers well they're defining like I said position and size of the window essentially so because of that this is actually specifying the overall okay so this is specifying the overall position of this window as the overall window here and the actual overall size of this window too is being defined in this way. So that's what's going on there and this is how you can actually lay out the size and dimensions of your window. And that's what the unified area rect means. It just basically means uh, position and size of your window element. So that takes care of the actual window. Then we go into another window opening tag is we don't close the parent window tag until we're done with all the features that are going to be stored within that window. So let's look at the next one. We're going to open up another window tag. You have to realize each element, and this will throw you for it first, but each element here on this window is actually a window. And they are subject to being children of this window here being the parent window. So let's just have a look at that real quick. So window type equals in quotes here, ogre tray slash list box close quotes, space name equals in quotes uh, open quotes here chat window slash chat server message list close quotes close uh, greater than less than signs. All right, and essentially that sets up the list box, which is this part right here and its name is chat window slash chat server message list. Now the reason why I have the chat window slash in there for the name is to let me know that hey these elements here of this window is the child of the parent window chat window. So that way I know what's part of what uh, here from a naming convention with inside of my code and so just more straightforward and more clear as to what is what. And so I saw that um, method of naming uh, throughout several different example codes and um, liked it so I ended up staying with that and I think it does help make things more straightforward although it does make code longer it does make things more straightforward. Okay so here we're going with the property tag again, we're saying name equals unified rack here, and then value equals, and then quotes, and then we're saying the size and position here as number sets for our window. Okay, and then of course we just close these tags here. And then close window tag. So this closes that element. And the reason why we're closing this element because we're done defining it. 
and because we don't want any of the other elements to be child of this element. So it's important that we close our window right when we're done with it so that other window here next right after it doesn't become a child of this window and of course we don't want that that'd be stupid so it's a good idea to keep these separated out all right so we're going to do a window right here tag and we're going to say type equals oh, in quotes here ogre tray slash edit box close quotes so we're setting up our edit box and the name is equal to oh, in quotes here chat window slash chat client eb close quotes and then close of course our tag so we have our property tag here, name equals, in quotes here, max text length, close quotes, space value um, equals, in quotes here, very large number, close quotes, slash, um, and of course closing the tag here, greater than sign. All right, so what's this? This is the max length. This is how many characters uh, in a string can be typed in before it doesn't allow any more. And there's always limits to, to how much someone can type in for one of these uh, input boxes. And this happens to be the maximum value that's allowed right here. And that's more than enough than anyone ever dream of, I think, pretty much. Unless you're writing your own novel into the window, at which point that's just ridiculous because you just got to get stored in memory and you got to process it and send the whole thing too. So it's best off if they have to hit enter and send these uh, amounts of text in chunks. It's just, it's more uh, efficient uh, from a memory standpoint and from a networking sending standpoint, too. Okay, so property here, name equals, in quotes here, unified area rec, close quotes. So again, what we're setting up, we're setting up the dimensions of our edit box. Yep. And value equals, and then here's our dimensions and our position on it. So basically, we just set up the dimensions and position of the edit box and we give it a name. Alright. And we also define the length of uh, how many characters can be put in it. Uh, one other part here, we have property, name equals text parsing enabled, and say value equals false here with quotes around it. And if you want to be able to parse the text you can. But there we are, we're closing tags on that. And closing window because again we don't want the next window thereafter to become a child of this window or shall we say the edit box all right so window space type equals in quotes here ogre tray slash buttons close quotes name equals open quotes chat window slash chat send btn for button close quotes close the tag so there's the ogre tray button one and um it's going to be the button here for the send button. This will make even more apparent sense when you see that, yes, the text for the button is send. <laughs> so, um, and it is a type button inside of Ogre Tray here because we're still staying with the Ogre theme. You note that since you're seeing this for the different window types, yes, you can actually change huh, the theme per element if you wanted to. I mean, it really could. And the button's considered its own window too, anyway. So, um, they coded up uh, a window type system. They just use it for everything. It works, works really good. Our fact. Okay, name equals in quotes here. Chat window slash chat sim btn close quotes and close the tags here. Property uh, tag here. Space name equals text. Space value equals send in quotes here for all of it. And close the uh, tag here. Property tag name equals unified area rec here and we'll close quotes around it value equals in quotes here all the different well position and um, yeah it sets up the position and size of the button basically alright so yep our text says send on that button we're going to close that button because it's a window with that window tag and then we're going to close our overall parent uh, tag here for a parent window which if you remember right is this again alright and then we close our GUI layout because we're done defining our GUI layout awesome and that pretty much wraps up how the XML documents are laid out and how to go about uh, accessing them 
for different parts. Now the next part we're going to have to do in here is we're going to, to uh, read this in, but we're going to, have to do a few things here, and we'll get into that in a bit. But over here in the chat window, we're going to start doing something a little different than we've done before. We're going to actually start laying things out in classes. Now the reason why we're going to do this is because it's way more uh, efficient from a programming standpoint. Uh, it does let you set up things to where it's more uh, graphically. Um, well, I mean, basically, you can have better uh, layout and util utilization. Lets you uh, keep things all in one place, where you can easily, um, you know, make changes to it, and if and then everything that makes use of that object gets um, updated and fixed. And the other thing about it is you can extend libraries, so it means you can build on top of one thing on top of another without having to recode it each time. So there's a lot, a lot of benefits to classes. They are way better. Uh, method of handling things typically, uh, but for some things they don't lay out well in memory. For well, they lay out well in memory, shall I say, but they are more of a memory hog for some things. And in a game that matters. So other times you, you don't want to be totally class based. You need to fall back to standard C type methods where it's memory efficient. And the other thing um, is that classes because of that memory problem could be a problem for you for laying it out if you're trying to do more of a modular approach to your design for maybe like a node based system for logic in which case then you need to go with a more modular approach which is what we've been doing so you know there's pluses and minuses to everything but I do think breaking this uh, stuff up into their own files in um, classes as much as possible is the best design method overall and then use those classes within inside of the main application which would significantly reduce the code in the main application so that's what we're doing if it wasn't for that the code would just be uh, getting longer and longer and longer and longer and you see now we have lots more files that are driving and defining our layout here I also want to point out one other thing I've created a resource file and the reason why I did this well basically um, yeah I can define the position of where the fonts are stored the file system here is equal to dot slash ce GUI slash fonts that's where fonts are here are where the image sets are going to be the look and feel where the schemes are stored and where the layouts are stored and we'll get into how that's coded up and how it's accessed with inside of C++ here in a bit but for now, there you go. All right. Yeah, believe it or not, this is got a lot of code. Uh, it's, it's gaining in size. Let's put it that way. All right. So chat window. Things we need. Well, okay. First off, how you create one of these? Go to File New. And you're gonna say File here, okay? And so again, File New File. And then once you come this up, once this comes up, blah blah blah. Uh, you go to here the H here C C++ header, select that, and then say go, and it lets you create a new, um, well, new process here for creating it. You come in here, you'll put in the name of your file. In this case, we're chat window dot H, right? All right, and I don't like the included part. I don't. I don't think that's good at all. I like it like this. Alright, I'm going to set that for release and debug, and then I'm going to tell it where I want it to go. See, in this case, the problem is, is it already exists for me. If it wasn't for that, though, I would just say finish and be done and create the file. In my case, I've already created the file, but for you, you would say finish after you've set it to there. And say save, that's where you want to put it. Okay, so we need if def define, well, this should already be there. Once it automatically just creates it. It also creates it with a nice pound in if force too, which is absolutely necessary. If you don't have these, it's not. It's going to be a problem. Let's just put it that way. What happens if this class gets called more than once? If it does, then you end up loading this thing into memory more than once and just wasting tons of memory and computations. And that's not smart. So let's do this. A pound define here, chat window. So if chat window has not been loaded in memory, if it's not been used yet as a library, uh, then define it as chat window h underscore h or shall we say dot h more or less. All right. Pound include here. Open close. Uh, greater than less than sign. String. 
then we need string to do a number of things in here from std library or standard lib. Uh, pound include here uh, ce GUI slash ce GUI dot h close great, uh, greater than sign. Uh, pound include here ce GUI slash um, render module slash opengl slash ce GUI opengl renderer dot h and, uh, and that's greater than less than sign so wrapping around that. Include here greater than less than signs sdl underscore thread dot h. Now this sdl underscore thread does not go and this will kind of take you for a loop does not go in here so you do not go into build options here and then add it to this list instead you leave it alone because it is literally part of just SDL and SDL main that's what it's part of so there's no need to go in and add SDL underscore thread matter of fact if you do it will keep your application from working and comp compiling because you'll be making a call to a compiling directive that doesn't exist so it's going to sit there and try to find the library that's not there and it's going to keep your application from compiling because it will be wanting to find that particular library that doesn't exist on the system uh, and you won't be able to get your application to compile so that's not going to work. Pound include here, open close uh, quotes here, client network h. Alright, we'll get into that later here um, but yeah you'll need this line of code and this will take you know multiple videos to go over this uh, but the reason why we have client uh, network dot h here because this is actually a class that defined um, that will allow us to actually connect to the network in the GUI graphical window here for essentially will let us do our messaging back and forth with the server here so if I come in here hello for instance and I see click and hold down on send because my application is running very slow inside of my uh, virtual machine although I could probably allocate, let me show you this real quick typically you can come in here and go into uh, might be in the file hmm don't know hold on virtual machine settings, yes there we are and typically you come in here to where it says processors now this system has four processors so I could actually pump this up to two and I'd be perfectly fine and um, I probably shouldn't have done that while I was recording <laughs> alright and since I have a multi-threaded application my application can now make use of more threads and will make my virtual machine run faster and it did we're now running faster than what we were before I still left two cores back for recording so it's still slow but it's definitely faster so I mean we're using very little of the system when we were doing these simulations in the past now since I do have four cores, I literally could go back in and add another core, but I need to leave one core back for my operating system, so be careful of that. Don't go crazy with it. Uh, in the case of my other computer, I have an i7. I have eight cores on there, so I could literally allocate seven cores towards the virtual machine here, no problem, and still have four cores sitting back to handle my... Uh, I still have one core uh, set back for handling my operating system of Windows. So that will make a massive difference and then that is how you can gain a lot more speed out of this thing if you so desire so feel free to do something like that if you like in my case I don't want to go above two at the moment because I'm recording and recording eats a processor like really a lot eats up a lot of processing power so that's the other thing this video recording software is going to be slowing down this whole um, presentation massively I've seen it massively affect uh, frame rates and processing so it's it's a big deal okay so here we have we're going to find our class so what is a class what is this all about why aren't we just easily coding this up as a module or setup and keeping it simple like we've been doing well at a certain point in time I wanted to basically take it to the next level and going to the next level would be classes and classes make things cleaner and easier and it's been getting kind of messy in the code and it's because we've been going with a very modular setup and not breaking things up into other files even doing a modular setup you'd want to break it into other files I just thought it'd be easier for learning it if I kept it in one file 
but I'm going to start breaking things up now as we go along and keep things in shorter uh, code blocks here and making things nicer and easier and cleaner to work with. So it makes a lot of sense to do this. And we'll probably go back and recode. Well, we won't reprogram everything. We'll just, you know, uh, recode parts of it into classes where, like, say, for instance, I don't know, the event system for input, maybe like the joystick or the mouse or the keyboard, maybe they each end up becoming a class that we access, um, and that wouldn't be a big deal, and then we can access an object. But that brings up a point here, now they become objects. So then it becomes really easy to access and use these within our application. So that's great because uh, that really reduces the amount of code that's hanging around uh, and makes life easier to use this stuff because now you can just say like a joystick could just be an object and you say you know joy zero joy one joy two etc and you have each joystick is has everything all its parts in it um, think of it like a struct now we've been doing structs and then basically that was like the old C method of doing this stuff and it still is the way you do C on a bunch of stuff you're trying to do like kind of like object oriented programming through objective C um, but for instance here's your struct here the difference between a struct and a class is that a struct can only have variables or aka properties as it's called inside of a class. When you move to a class, a variable that's part of that class is called a property instead of a variable. And functions within a class, instead of just being called functions, if they're part of that class, they're called uh, methods. And if a property or a um, method is part of a class they are considered to be members of that class so these are terms that are used on a regular basis for dealing with object-oriented programming and the reason why I'm calling it object-oriented programming is you could literally have um, a class called ball and refer to it to the ball and you could define things like the size of the ball and like you know, um, you know different properties of the ball like the look of it etc etc So this is very cool because you can use use this for lots of stuff. Like you could create a class called model, and it would literally hold models, you know, as a thing. And you could use that model class for all the different models, like how many triangles does it have, how much, you know, how many points, how many edges, blah blah blah. The UVs for the model, you know, all this stuff. It's all very useful. It's all stuff you need, right? And you could store it within one of these classes as a handy, easy to use object that you can reuse over and over again for each thing. And so, you know, a class then becomes basically a, um, a data type for a variable. So let me show you something here. Uh, let me scroll down. Okay, yeah, see? So, game chat window. Now we just did um, our chat window here. So, here you go, dot h has a class there's game chat window here right so say game chat window becomes my data type of the class and then my chat window is the name of my variable and it holds everything that this class has in it and I can do with that actual um, variable here or shall we say object and there is a different type of naming convention when you get to classes like for instance your first letter for each property and function would be a capital letter and that's standard only reason why you would do a lowercase one back over here in main is because it's not part of um, a class I consider structs to be more classes so I also capitalize that first letter but if it's not then I made it lowercase typically you'll see that represented in a number of places here so for instance key delay, key repeat, k ish lowercase for each one. Why? Because it's just a local standard variable. It's not part of a class. It's not an object. I can easily define objects separately from um, local variables by doing my capitalization that way. And that's standard. It's a really good practice because it helps you in one look tell is this a class when you're reading through the code and you don't have to scroll back up to see if it's a class or not or if it's a local variable simply because you know that first letter is capitalized or not and that gives you that information immediately without having to go hunt it down so that's the standard programming convention It's used by lots of programmers out there and it's pretty much well I guess I'd say industry-wide used pretty much I don't care what language you're using 
for programming languages, that's pretty much standard for the most part for any major language for programming. So very, very useful. And then some like languages like Java or C Sharp, which is almost exactly like Java. Um, you know, the capitalization, however, uh, they're like almost totally classed. Like everything's classed in like Java and, and C Sharp. So um, almost everything would be capital from first capital letter because everything is extending some class. And it's a very different idea of going about stuff here. Um, where you start with a class for practically everything and you just extend it and you do lots of object oriented programming um, alright so with that all said open curly brace close curly brace semicolon that semicolon is really important if you don't have that semicolon and it's the most forgotten thing this end it pound end if here and this semicolon here with those curly brace at the end is something that lots of people forget, even experienced people. They'll just forget to put it there because it's not at the end of most functions or most whatever. You know, it's not something you normally put at the end of a um, set of curly braces. So do not overlook that one. If you do, sometimes for some of these compilers, you can get really nasty errors or completely off the mark, and you can go on a wild goose chase when all you're missing is that semicolon. So if you have some problems, whatever, first check to see if that semicolon is there or not. So essentially all we're doing is um, for our functions you remember back when you could actually just declare them ahead of time and then go down and define them. And this way you could um, you know, do functions out of order if you declare them before you define them. And that's the point of declaring functions. And it just makes it to where you don't have to worry about um, execution of you know, order of which um, functions are laid out and oh I accidentally moved one function ahead of above one other one and now it no longer works because I didn't declare my yeah my functions ahead of time so that's a problem so this avoids all that and here I'm setting up the thread so we'll see that later alright so that we can avoid all that and essentially this is what we're doing in a class we're actually just declaring all our functions and all our variables ahead of time and then we go over here to our chat window.cpp and we define them as to what they actually mean and what they actually do. So please be aware of that, because that's what's going on. Okay. So here we go. We have our uh, public and private, and there's more. There's uh, protected also. We'll get into that too. Public means that basically um, anyone can access this. So essentially, if I'm over here inside of uh, my main window here, and I use the data type game chat window, which is this class here, and I give it a variable uh, my chat window here, semicolon, and it gets put on the local memory stack because that's what's going on there. I can then turn around and access this over here in my application. But I can only access the parts that are public, and I cannot access other parts. For instance, create CE GUI window here for chat window is where it's only exists inside of the public so because it's in public I can access it whereas if I'm here sitting there saying register handlers I cannot access this this is private this can only be accessed with inside of the actual class itself and not outside of it not even um, classes that inherit this class to extend it can access this this is still off limits if you want something that you can access through inheritance and make modifications to in an extended class later on, then you need to make it protected instead of private, and then you can. But right now, I'll set the private only this class, and no other class through inheritance can actually access these functions. Uh, for some things that where I need to gain access to different parts of this class within other uh, functions or other um, objects, etc., uh, with other classes, then I put it into the public so it can be accessible so that way I can make use of it. So this gets into a whole class architecture design and typically in a game company your lead programmer is going to define out the whole class structure for the game or for some application and that makes a lot of sense because they're the most experienced on this stuff and they're going to be the best qualified to actually lay out uh, the class architecture because it is crucial when you're creating your application to lay out a good class structure if you don't, it will seriously impact in a very negative way the application if it's laid out 
correctly, it will seriously impact it in a very positive way. So as much experience as you can get basically is needed for doing this kind of stuff. And it really makes a difference. Okay. So we're doing public here. So these are the ones that are visibly accessible. Uh, and one of the ones that's accessible is layout. So layout can be changed on a regular basis, which is great. So we can set our layout if we so desire. Uh, game chat window. The game chat window is the constructor. And then we have the destructor, which is the tilde game chat window. Open, close, parentheses, semicolon. It's the only difference between the two. Um, the constructor is used to create the class for setting it up, or shall we say initialize the variables, or aka properties, within inside of our class here. And the destructor is to delete things in memory that were created in memory that are no more. They don't need to be no more. And also you can do other things. In our case, we actually disconnect from the server upon uh, the deletion of this app. So that way we do not um, crash the server or that so that we do not uh, just interrupt and cancel out the client. Which is cool. Which is very cool. And that lets us cleanly exit. It's just a smart thing to do. Uh, void creates the GUI um, window here. Open close parentheses semicolon. This lets us create our window. Static here, client network, network, semicolon. This lets us make our network connection so we can send our data back and forth from our window to the actual network server. So that makes it easy as a uh, way of handling that. All right, and then we have bool here, parse text. Now this is something to be with the listener, and it was in the private section beforehand, but I moved it out because we needed to gain access to it um, for, well, mainly for handling this um, with the uh, whole, um, he say, well, we need to deal with this for the um, thread uh, that we're going to have for accessing for reading from the server. So as we receive messages from the server, we need to display them here in, the, in our list part. So for that reason, I had to move parse text and out text into the public area so it can be accessed for the thread and so that it could be made use of. Uh, I did try putting the thread in here, but it was too much of a pain in the butt. And the reason why was that the thread is based in C and because it's based in C, the memory doesn't lay out between C and C++ for the structures for the class, for classes for C++ versus, you know, structs and things of that nature in C. And so because things lay out completely differently in, in memory and for way pointers or access, m accessing memory uh, in the system, then you have a conflict of interest basically between the two and things don't tend to work too well. Uh, so it's kind of bad to intermix them, but uh, there's ways of doing it where it's just not a problem and in my case I just felt like it was easier with all the uh, headaches it was causing just to implement it in the application side over here for the actual thread alright so parse text is going to do what it says and it's going to basically uh, edit the text that's in there in, in MSG here close uh, this is not uh, you know MSG for the restaurant, but in message basically. Close parentheses, semicolon. Bool output text here. Open parentheses. See GUI colon colon string space. In MSG here, comma. See GUI colon colon color space color. Yes, the English spelling of color from England. Equals see GUI here colon colon color. And then the color that's provided here, which would be solid white. Yeah. for the output text. Then we move to private. Now remember these are only variables and, or pro, so I'll say properties and methods aka functions that are going to be accessed within the class and nothing else. Alright so this can only be accessed from the class here. So void register handlers open handlers open close parentheses semicolon. Then this must say bool. This one also must say bool for boolean. Even if we don't use it, actually, it doesn't matter for it to actually work with CE GUI. We must have to set this bool. 
So be aware of that. That is absolutely critical. It will the application just out flat won't work if you set it to void, believe it or not. So open close parentheses to make colon here. So register handlers. And that's just the way C GUI works. So bool here space text submitted. Open parentheses const C E GUI colon colon event args space and event close parentheses semicolon. So text submitted. Uh, this is basically text that's being uh, uh, inputted into the window. So remember how I typed in here something and then hit send? That's what we're talking about. So that'd be inputting text. So that'd be text submitted, if you will. Uh, and then we have crazy eddies event args here and the event that caused it. Then we have bool here, send button pressed, open parentheses, const e GUI, colon, colon, event args here, space, and event, close parentheses, semicolon. And again, this is an event that's being passed in for a send button. So basically, the click of the send button is being passed in. All right, and then we have CE GUI, uh, colon, colon, window, space, star, chat window. CE GUI, star, colon, colon, std, uh, sorry, string, pre space, prefix, uh, semicolon here. And so let's just do our prefix uh, for our name, naming prefix. You'll see what it means in a bit here. Uh, this is actual chat window here. And that's going to be a pointer. And then static int uh, instance, and this is so we can set our instance. And that's a semicolon. And again, don't forget that's a curly brace with a closing semicolon. All right, and that's that for defining our. Uh, well, it's not defining, but for declaring our class in the chat window dot uh, In the next video, we'll get into chat window dot cpp and start going through there and exploring how that works. Alright, so with that, that's the first part here <laughs> of several uh, for doing the chat window with a um, client-based um, programming with the CE GUI system or Crazy Eddy GUI system. Um, so with that, my name is Nate Nessler and this is for Hyperactive Studios. Thank you very much.